Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted the initiate from the Scions of the Flame Warcry Warband. Here's our miniature already primed with the Wraithbone Citadel spray, and that's designed especially for the contrast paints, which is what we'll mostly be using on the miniature in this video. I'll be painting the miniature to a battle-ready tabletop standard using beginner techniques and making the most of those contrast paints. First of all, I took some ceramic white and I just went over some of the areas that I wanted to be a lot paler or a lot brighter, such as the head there, parts of the face and the hair. I also went over anywhere where the, the primer didn't cover. I didn't do such a great covering in all those nooks and crannies, so I just made sure that everywhere was covered with a nice base and then gave it plenty of time to dry before I started applying all the layers of contrast paint to it. I'm using the Army Painter War Game Character Brush for most of the painting in this video and I also switched to some other smaller brushes but this is kind of the, the best option I think and a really good size for covering every part of the model. Once that white layer dried I took some Technical Contrast Medium and Contrast Griff Charger Grey and I mix those together and I use two parts contrast medium to one part paint and I mix it together thoroughly and then this is going to be for the hair and I just want a really kind of light grey bluey tone to the hair so it's almost like white hair just with the shadows in amongst it. So this is the third model I did from the warband and the first one wasn't so great the second one got a little bit better and then once I'd kind of learnt from those two models and got started on this one, the Initiate here, I kind of started getting used to the contrast paints on the little miniature fighters and was getting pretty comfortable with how much to apply and learning how the effects of each of the paint would work. With the contrast paints, some are much darker, whereas some are very light. So you're just getting used to which ones are dark, which ones are light, how much paint you can put on and even how many layers of each one. The hair done, I moved on to the fire, so I took some yellow, orange and red, all contrast paints, and then I started picking out the flames, like on the axe here. On this model, there's not many flames, so this technique isn't kind of the best example, but if you look at some of the other videos I've done, especially for the, the brazen champion, you'll see a lot more how I wet blend these paints to get the fire effect. But starting with the yellow, I cover all the fire, or almost all of it, just leaving a tiny, tiny bit of white where it meets the axe. And then while it's all still wet and I'm not cleaning the brush, I'm just moving from the yellow to the orange and then to the red. So making sure there's a complete coat of yellow on there. And I've got all my pots open, ready, so that I can do this stage pretty quick because I don't want that yellow to dry. So I just wipe off the excess wipe my brush on a little bit of kitchen towel and then I go straight into the orange putting just enough on there and I'm looking at about halfway up the flame I'm going to start on the orange and start adding it on and for this I'm using a really small small brush and just putting a tiny bit at a time I didn't want to flood this because the contrast paint could easily go over all the flame and ruin that yellow that I've already put on then I've got the red paint and just put a tiny bit on the end of the flames and this is such a small flame, we didn't need a lot. So I guess I'm looking at about 20% of the flame here, just with the red, and then just blending that into the orange and making it all look like it's one complete flame. Now I'm getting a tiny bit more orange and just going in between the red and orange and the yellow and orange and just putting a tiny bit and just blended it together so it looks like it's flowing rather than three strips of different coloured paint. And the final stage was to get some black paint. And this is the black Templar contrast paint again. And now I'm getting a really, really small amount. And I'm just going to put it on the very tips of the flame just to kind of signify where the flame turns into smoke. And this is just a, almost like a little dot. Very small, very subtle, but it kind of finishes that flame off brilliantly. You can see here I've just got a little bit too much on the brush. So I check it on my, on my hand first just to make sure I'm not putting too much on. Again, this can be so kind of runny, this paint, and can pull really quick. I don't want it to spoil the flame work that I've already done. With the flame done, I moved on to the flesh with some technical contrast medium and contrast Gilliman flesh. And with these, I mix them together 
using two parts contrast medium to two parts Gilliman flesh. Mixed the paint together, I made sure I cleaned off my brush and got rid of the excess water and then started using it so it's just completely paint going on then. And then I started on the top of the head where I wanted it to be kind of the brightest and then I started ending my brush strokes in the kind of ears and the features where I wanted most of that shade to happen. So with the contrast paint, you've got enough time to really guide it around and let it pool where you want it. But it is important to not let it pool on the places where you want the most highlight. So I put quite a bit here. You can see on the eyes and nose, I'm really filling it in there and then gently brushing across the forehead, trying to coax it into the different grooves and features and the kind of line where the hair meets the head as well. I found with the contrast paints, you've really got to work it and push it to where you want it to kind of pool and shade the most. There's almost not too much room for error, but once you get it, get used to it and start kind of feeling how it kind of plays and spreads across the different parts of the miniatures, it does get a lot easier. And um, the effects I think are really good, especially on skin and cloth where there's lots of creases and things like that. And here I'm just going back and putting a little bit more into the features where I want more to pull and trying to end my brush stroke where I want most of the paint to end up. And then if there's too much, I just kind of take the paint off the brush and then wick it away. And the same here for the legs and the arms, just kind of spreading it all over and then pushing it into those cracks around the kneecap and anywhere where that kind of leg is meeting other materials like the metal and the cloth. Now you can see once that's dried, those shades have really kind of bedded in to the grooves and the features and you, I don't try and paint any eyes. I tried on the first model and it was a disaster um, so I decided not to continue trying that. Right now we're on to some contrast yand and yellow and this is going to be for the handle of the weapon and again just I'm using it out of the pot here but I've got that tiny brush again I'm just putting such a little amount on. You could certainly use a palette to have a bit more control because this brush is so small, I'm finding I can just put a tiny bit at a time. And here I want it to be darker at the base of the handle and then getting lighter as it works up. So to do that, I just kind of put one even coat over the whole handle and then again went down to where I wanted it darker and just added more and more of the contrast paint. That top part of the weapon is going to be metal, so I left that as it was. And you can see this contrast paint really working into the grooves already and as it starts drying I just added a little bit more to get it darker. Next it's snake bite leather and this is a really good contrast paint and this is going to be for all the leather pouches, belts and all those kind of things and I find just one coat of this is perfect and it leaves a really good effect. Uh, what I've also found though is if you just go over it once it's dried and just put tiny tiny dots in the recesses that adds to the effect a little bit more but really you only need one coat of snake bite leather and the same for the flesh that was just one coat as well there we go now i'm doing that belt on the back there and the little pouch and this paint this snake bite leather really goes on nicely next we took some griffound orange and i gave it a good shake really important to shake all these paints thoroughly and now i'm moving on to do the cloak and I just used the small brush here, but I found the more models I, I was doing, it was for large areas like this, it was much better to use a bigger brush. So this was probably too small for this. But the same effect, I'm putting one nice thick coat this time. So I'm really loading it up and putting quite a lot on. But you can see I'm having to go back and forth to the pot quite a lot. Whereas what I learned from this model is a bigger brush is much better. You can load it up and get a nice even coat across a large area very quickly. And with that dried, you can see this has really gone into those creases nicely. This miniature is, is really good for the contrast paints, I think. Um, whereas the first one I did had more of a flat material and that didn't look as good. But I was really happy with how the contrast paints gave the contrast of shade and highlights here on this piece. And while that was drying, I took some lead belcher and this is a Citadel base paint. Really good shake for this. And this is gonna be for all the metallic parts of the model. And so whether the, these bits are gonna end up silver or gold, I give them all a base coat of the lead belcher. And this goes on nice and even. I wet my brush a little bit just to help it spread out. 
and I found just one coat was enough, but you could give it two if you like. So all these kind of twisted braids or chains, I wanted those to look metallic, so I covered those as well and made sure everything had a nice base coat, nice and even, and just taking my time so I didn't go over any of the contrast work I'd already done. I was really happy with the progress here and I was starting to get used to the contrast paints and how much to put on and how to thin it out or just use it straight from the pot. The first two miniatures I did taught me a lot and um, I was really happy at this stage. So with all the coats dry now, I took some technical contrast medium and contrast flesh tear as red and then I mixed those together. I used four parts contrast medium to one part flesh tear red and on the previous models I'd experimented with this and I'd done it a little bit too dark so I didn't want it as dark on this one and so this kind of ratio seemed to work well and I used this on all the other models. Now this is to take the orange to a little bit more of a red colour. Could have left this orange but I just wanted that more deeper red tone as I thought it would contrast more with the other features especially when we move on to the other models and they've got that really cool looking turquoise for the scales of the beasts that they kill. This red tone also helped deepen those shadows in the recesses so I made sure to focus on that more than the other areas and where possible I left out the highlighted areas so that more of the orange would show through. And there we go that's really changed it and you can see it's a lot deeper a lot richer and those two coats working together worked really well. On the two previous miniatures it was just too red but this was a really nice balance of that four to one medium to paint. With that complete I moved on to the meta work and I took some contrast gillum and flesh and this was something I learnt from doing the terrain pieces where if you get the lead belcher and then put different coloured contrast paints over the top they give really nice metallic effects. And this gillum and flesh works really well for bronze which I'm going to use for the flame burst pots and the bottom of the axe and also at the top of the axe where the flames come out of it. And I think this is a nice kind of dull bronze. If you want something more gold, a bit more brighter, then you'll see on some of the other miniatures I paint in the other videos, I choose some different contrast paint colours and they give some really nice effects too. And there we go, you can see that effect now with that lead belcher and Gilliman combo is a really nice metallic effect. I'm going to move on to the kind of more silver areas of the axe here and the handle and those braided chains and I chose to use technical contrast medium with contrast back black templar. You could use like Agrax Earthshade or Known Oil and I did that later on actually in some others but here I wanted to just stick to the contrast paints so I took four parts contrast medium to two parts black templar contrast paint and then mixed them together thoroughly. And again, once I mixed it, I cleaned off my brush so that the brush was kind of nice and clean and I had a lot of control over how much paint was on it. And now I'm applying that to all those silver areas and I'm almost treating this like a wash of known oil and I'm putting quite a lot on and really working it into the recesses and everything. Just taking care when I get to the parts where it meets a, another material or the skin, I'm just making sure I'm taking my time and just doing a little bit at a time there. And then here on this large flat section, you can really load your brush up and spread it around and it works really nice. I've also, as I got moved on and certainly on to the, the bigger miniatures with the larger axes, I found you could blend, wet blend to contrast together on there for a nice effect. And there we are, we're almost finished and I think for a, a battle ready miniature, these contrast paints are perfect. I was really happy with the kind of deep dark tones in the recesses but I wanted to add a little bit extra highlight to the metallic work. So I took some Vallejo 0.997 silver and then gave it a good shake and then just started applying that on the very edges of the weapons and the raised parts of the handle. I also put a highlight in all those braids and chains there just to make them stand out a little bit more. And I think that really kind of brought that metal work to life. So looking at the miniature now when it's dried, I think I could have been a bit more bolder with the highlights, but I was just being so careful at the time. But I think there's enough on the braids, but maybe on the weapon, it just needs a little bit more contrast there on the edges and maybe some scratches and things for battle wear. But for the standard I was looking for, this was going in the right direction and I was really happy. But next I took some gold, Vallejo 0.996 gold. 
and that's going to be for the flame burst pot and the brass colours. On later models I just stuck with the silver and just used those to highlight. But here I thought I'd use the gold and just give a contrast between the two different metals. And I was quite generous with this highlight on this kind of ankle bracelet here because it was really it really standing out a big chunky piece of metal and it's going to catch some of the light from that flame as well. And this is the finished piece, a battle ready, tabletop ready miniature with mostly contrast paint using some simple techniques or with contrast paints and then just with the lead belcher and a little bit of highlighting. I hope this video is helpful for you and shown you how the contrast paints work. I'll put a list of all the paints I used in the description below and so you can follow those links to pick them up for yourself. There'll be affiliate links but they don't cost you anything extra, in fact they're going to save you money and with every sale I make a small commission which helps me develop the channel and I'm really grateful for that support. If you'd like to see how I painted the other miniatures from the Science of the Flame Warband, please check out the other videos on my channel. I found as I moved on to the bigger miniatures and certainly the leader and the champion, the kind of textures to paint on were much better and really worked well with the contrast paints. I've also made some separate videos on how to make the bases I used and also how to fix the painted miniatures to the painted bases. Thanks so much for watching the video. I really hope it's helped you out. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more content like this, and don't forget to hit that notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games.